So today we are going to talk about content creation for nonprofit. So uh, who am I? My name is Jen Jambi. I'm a content creator. So I create content on video, webinars, workshops. I do email swipes, surveys, and so much. I even do blogs. So that is the type of content I create. I also do digital marketing. And I don't do everything in digital marketing. I specialize in search engine marketing. That is Google, Bing, and Pinterest. I also do social media retargeting. And I also encourage uh, on, on email marketing and SMS marketing, which is always sidelined by so many businesses in Africa. Uh, mostly here in Kenya, you find that you buy something online, or you, you, you go to an NGO, they don't have a newsletter. And so they are not telling you about their new blog, their new work, their new anything, because they are not doing this type of, they're not sharing what they are doing with me using their email. But if you go to Leonard Chesa, they're doing it. And these are the things I want to talk about. I also do web design and graphic design. And graphic design is very important when it comes to content creation, because you will need uh, images to like, if you're going to talk about coronavirus awareness, you're going to demonstrate the importance of washing hands by images, by animated images. So graphic design plays a crucial role when it comes to content creation. Infographics, statistics, you're going to share them in form of graphic design, web design. So I tend to, I uh, see so many websites in Kenya. A good example is in Wadada by Janet Mbugwa. Uh, this other one by the first lady, Beyond Zero Campaign. They don't have a part where you can donate. You can click on donate and you're able to donate like $30. Uh, and, and it goes checking out easily. There is no that system. So it becomes cumbersome when you have now to keep typing uh, the, the details for the bank, doing things manually. So it discourages you to even um, donate because you know people want easy things, but when nonprofit make it hard, it becomes uh, hard to attract more funding. And this strategy has been adapted, done so well by uh, Black Lives Matter website where they have a donate now button and you can donate easily. And they even ask you, can we do recurring donation and you can be donating to them every month. But well, that's not what brought us here today. Today we are going to just talk about what is content creation. So content creation, uh, is a process of generating topic ideas that appeal to your buyer persona, creating written or visual around those ideas and making that information accessible to your audience as a blog, video, infographic, and other formats. So uh, let's say um, uh, my topic is around female genital mutilation. There are people who don't understand what female genital mutilation is. So I have to come up with a topic and um, help people understand what um, this topic is all about, why they should pay attention to female genital mutilation, why they should pay attention to early marriages in the Maasai culture, why they should uh, care about uh, the effects of female genital mutilation uh, when it comes to childbirth and the woman enjoying sex. Why do we need? Why do we need to take action? And why do we need to fight female genital mutilation? All of us, but not just me alone. Okay, you, that's the purpose of content creation. So you want to create content and empower people. But now, in this case, you're going to be using the internet. You're going to be using search engines like Google. You're going to be using email marketing. You're going to be using your website. You're going to be using um, Facebook posts. So you're going to, 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 to use this post uh, to create content that is engaging and tell these people, uh, uh, 
this is what I want you to do. And um, when, when you go to a, a non-profit, uh, if you go to a Facebook post and a, a donation ad by World Food Program, in the comment section, let's say it's a video being done and they want uh, donations, the button is donate now, you find in the comment section, they are saying, uh, a healthy woman borrowing food for hungry children, trying to make money out of the poor. Because there is no content created to help people understand why we need to feed, why World Health, World Food Program need to feed the poor, you find so many negative comments in the comment section. And instead of that comment section being used to inspire each other or to educate each other on the importance of donating, donating something to the hungry, we use it, those comment section, we use it to discourage donations, which for me, it's it, it's it, this problem is created by not educating people as to why it's important to donate, you know, and most people think donation is only money, you can donate your clothes, you can donate your skills, you can like volunteer your skill. So most people need to be educated on the importance and the impact that donations have in the society through webinars, through blog posts, through infographics, those uh, images where you have washing your hands or an expectant mother sleeping under a mosquito net being done on social media, ebooks, writing an ebook on why female genital mutilation should end. So instead of going to social media directly, asking people for donation and getting the negativity, what if you tell them, I have this ebook or, or you just have this blog post that explains the importance of uh, joining hands and fighting female genital mutilation and in that blog, there is the donate now button. They are educated. They are aware as to why they should participate. If we look at Black Lives Matter, in 2020, they raised $90 million. And the average donation was $30. How was this possible? Black Lives Matter had to do a lot. You see that time of um, this guy who, Floyd, a guy by the name Floyd, he, he, he was, um, he died. The police killed him. And so much content was uh, published on why Black Lives Matter, why Black Lives Matter. There is this other girl who talks about environment. She's talking about environment. She's empowering us on why we should care about the environment. So if you want to support her, you donate to her knowing you're donating to protect the environment, but she doesn't come this way. Donate for us to be able to to uh, to protect the environment, but she is like talking about why it's important to take care of our environment. And people now, and, and she creates a big following. The same way with what Black Lives Matter creates a big follow following that now believes in you, understand what you do, and even if they have thirty dollars, they are willing to give it to you. And that dollar, thirty dollars, become a lot, a lot, and now it can be able to support projects in in the U.S. Uh, for Black people, so that Black people can can really have an impact in the society. So, um, so when this content in form of webinar posts uh, in social media, uh, blog posts on your website, uh, uh, we have webinars, ebooks, surveys. When they are created, uh, holding them back is not important, but distributing them is what uh, makes everything possible. It's what uh, gets on people's phones 
in front of their uh, social media feeds and they are going through and now they are able to see your content or they search something on, on search engines and they find you and you empower them. So this, this content needs to be distributed through a website. So uh, if I think of Black Lives Matter, I'll definitely go and type blacklivesmatter.com. If I hear Leonard Chesa disability, I'll go type leonardchesadisability.com. And if I, if I don't get a .com, uh, I might, um, I'm likely to find something else that is near to them. So a website will, will, uh, will help you distribute your content in form of, uh, in form of uh, blogs, infographics, and also have a newsletter where people can enter so you can be sending them and edu emails that will be educating them regarding uh, on why Black Lives Matter, why fighting FGM is important, and why um, building schools in Africa, in a place like Mozambique, or in a place like in a place like Kenya, or uh, in a place like Trukana, Kenya, is important. So you help them understand why it's important instead of going like give us donations so that we can do this. You educate them first, and now they become your following. Social media posts are very important, and I'll give a good example. And then we have search engines, Google, being able to be found on Google when someone types, why does Black Lives Matter? And they find you on Google and now you're educating them, they will subscribe to your school of thought. But even if you have the best content and you're not, you cannot be found, you cannot reach people, it doesn't make sense having it just somewhere kept it needs to be distributed and the other one which is email sending emails to uh people who have subscribed to your newsletter so let's look at a nice website like black lives matter how they distribute their content so you see i just went straight and typed black lives matter and i don't have a lot of distractions i have news so if I want to look at news regarding Black Lives Matter, I would definitely go to there. And they have gone or uh, they have uh, they have always gone and done a shop to help them do even more fundraising by selling t-shirts. So if you go to blacklivesmatter.com and you click shop, you will be able to purchase um, some products from them, like a t-shirt. OK, so. Um, so when people come to see your content, they are able to see, oh my God, they have a shop. And if they don't feel like donating, you can see how visible the donate now button is. They're like, let me shop something from them. So that way you're even able to raise donations for your nonprofit. You can raise by selling something all by them donating. And they go to news, they start educating themselves. They see the latest news, like how Jesse Smollett um, trial, you know, the Jesse Smollett trial, some, this guy from, M, is it called Empire? That show by Cookie, Cookie someone, they, they are a music uh, family. So uh, the guy is having a trial. He was having a trial last year and he was convicted. He's black and he's um, a member of the LGBT community. So, um, they are trying to tell us what's happening so and um that's a very good way of uh of uh, acquiring donation through content okay so if someone hears black lives matter why do i want to, to matter why do i want to care they go search your website they come they start educating themselves they even come and now start drooling they see a shop, they like a t-shirt, they buy it, they come click donate, you never know. So um, another good example, to another good way of distributing uh, content is through posts on social media, doing a social media post. So um, you can see a good example is World Health Organization. And you can do this through a Facebook page or your own Facebook profile. So you can see that uh, how many women do not breastfeed 
for as long as they would. This is how we all support breastfeeding mothers anytime, anywhere. And they use very nice images that, them, that show a, a doctor or a nurse, um, all this, showing women breastfeeding. So um, when you create nice social media with very nice graphics that are engaging and are easy to relate, because you want anybody to relate with this image. Anybody, even if I'm not going to read through, I'm going to be looking at it and I'm seeing this is a doctor, this is that, this is that. And it becomes so easy for people to engage with your content. So they, 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 they become part of it. They now understand why women should be breastfeeding more to the children instead of saying, donate to us so that we can help women breastfeed. What if you create content and tell them the importance of allowing any woman to be able to breastfeed their children as long as they want? So um, the other way of distributing this content in form of videos, uh, in form of, uh, of uh, uh, posts, blog posts, in form of webinars, workshops, is through um, search engine like Google, a search engine like YouTube, where you go and put your, and upload your video and people search topics related to FGM and they find you there. So stop FGM in Africa or someone asks Google, why should I participate in fighting FGM in Africa? The first people you find are actually Plan International. Okay, and they are talking about the seven ways to end FGM. So what happens when you go to read this type of an article here, you will find what they are talking about, seven ways to end FGM and why you should join this uh, movement of stopping FGM in Africa by donating some cash, by donating your skills, by donating or even becoming a board member of probably Plan International and influence decisions. Because if you want people to participate in your NGO, you want they either donate, they either volunteer skills that make sense, not to volunteer skills that seriously. If you are building a school in Africa and someone comes and say, hey, I'm a carpenter, I can create desks. Are you guys going to need someone to create this? I don't have money, but I can volunteer my skill of being a carpenter. I will, I will work on 100 days. That's a very good skill. But someone comes and tells you, hey, I know nothing. I'm just looking for somewhere I can be. That person doesn't have so much value. So they will be at your bottom list. So you will want to attract people who are probably going on vacation. If I say, hey, I want to go to vacation uh, in Kenya, what is a nonprofit activity I can do? I can go and uh, work, work with these women on, on, on doing their bid work, and then I can help them uh, sell this bid work. I can volunteer to teach them how to, to, to sell this bid work on the internet because I'm in, in, in digital marketing. So my volunteer skill makes sense to them. But if I don't have a skill, what am I volunteering? Definitely nothing. So they donate, they volunteer, they become a board member who is probably going to influence. If you look at Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation of board members, you can imagine Bill Gates and Warren Buffett. You can imagine the, the influence Warren has um, I'm just giving an example. So if you can have an influential person in your board and they're going to influence so much to, uh, to your nonprofit being impactful, you can bring in them by reading your posts, your blogs, your anything on social media, on Google, on your website, your emails, okay? So um, if you you have a website and you cannot be found on Google because you don't know how to work on search engine optimization. You don't have uh, 
funds to even hire somebody to do SEO, you can opt for Google for nonprofits. And Google for nonprofits, you need to be, your NGO need to be registered. Uh, if you're in Kenya, it will work. If you're in Nigeria, I believe, South Africa, I don't know other countries that Google for nonprofit accept in Africa in Africa, but if if you can, if you're interested in Google for nonprofit and I've not mentioned, if you're if you're from those three countries, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, if you are if you're not from those three countries, you can just go to Google and search. Does Google accept my country, Uganda, for Google for nonprofit? It will give you an answer. So what is Google for nonprofit? It allows you to, it gives you 10,000 dollars in ad grant every single month and with this ad grant you can tell google google i want you to show my nonprofit in countries anywhere in the world and rank me and uh, it's likely to rank you among number one two three on specific topics so you need to have a website to be able to qualify and, and when you qualify, they will allow you to have an email connected to your website, one email address for free on Google Workspace. So what Google will do is that it will be, it will be showing your ads, your advertisements for nonprofit every single month, anywhere you tell it. If you tell it, show my, my nonprofit, advertise my nonprofit in the US, in Canada, in Australia, in Kenya, in South Africa, whichever way it will. And people will be able to interact with your content on Google easily. And uh, that way you can be able to share your school of thought to influence people to follow your movement and donate to your cause. All volunteer, very important skills. Another way to uh, distribute your content is actually through Airbnb. And Airbnb doesn't uh, charge the 20%, it waits the 20% for nonprofit. So you can see a Kibera nonprofit founder uh, gives a tour in um, Kibera to people. So you, if your nonprofit is for helping um, fight FGM and you are having a shelter, a place where these women can go when they run away and they have opportunities, they have income generating opportunities like basketry, like uh, things that they do. You can do Airbnb experiences virtually as a nonprofit. And people from all over the world can watch from their smartphones. Their smart, my smartphone is somewhere here. So smartphone from my phone and be like, hey, I in July, I'm visiting South Africa. What are some of the nonprofit activities I can do for two days? Or I'm going to Zimbabwe. So I see a school is being built. So I sign up for the Airbnb experience. They show me some of the things they do through Airbnb experience. Please go, go learn Airbnb experience, how powerful it is. It's, it's actually you do things virtually. So I sit here, you're in South Africa, you're showing me things with other probably 10, 10 attendees and we have paid, by the way, we pay. You explain things to us. Then if I'm coming to visit Zimbabwe, I'm like, do I still want to go to that place? Did I like it? With, is it worth volunteering my skill after the virtual experience? I'm like, yes or no. But you, raise, you, you helped raise funding through a virtual experience on Airbnb. So if, if you're doing um, basketry or beadwork, with uh, children with disability. You're helping them uh, with kitchen garden, uh, dressmaking. So you give this virtual experience on Airbnb 
And if I'm in Canada, I get to decide, do I want to come and take a tour one day? Or do I just come to Kenya and go to another nonprofit that showed me something better as I tour in Kenya? So yes, that's uh, it. Then the other way of distributing content is through email. And if you have a website, it's very important to encourage people to sign up for your newsletter to keep up to date with the new latest news and events, OK? So you keep sharing with them. Uh, everything that's latest, everything that's important to you and important to them. So, well, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. And on the chat, I can see like there is someone, oh, asking a question. No, not asking a question, but saying, wow, Airbnb virtual experience, that's new to me. Yes, Airbnb virtual experience is so powerful. Do it for your nonprofit. You're going to be able to distribute content. You're going to be able to distribute your school of thought, your ideology to people who want to participate. Because first of all, for them to participate, they have to pay. And they'll pay $15, $20 for the experience. And you never know whom you're talking to. They might go and talk to someone and tell them, hey, you know, I saw this in Kenya, you could be interested. I saw this lady in South Africa. I saw this lady from Nigeria. She's talking about this, this nonprofit thing. You can donate to her. You never know how you're going to get your donations. So for me, be everywhere, distribute your content as much as possible. And thank you so much uh, for your time. You can ask me a question if you have any, I will definitely answer. We have a... Uh, we have 15 more minutes because I had said I'll present for one hour. You can unmute yourself and ask a question. I see we are two, we're just three of us. We are Dennis and we are Catholic Bible Foundation. Hello. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jen, for this. Uh, I, I just decided to pop into the call. Uh, mm -hmm. because I felt that uh, this is an area that has been of interest to me for some time, but I uh, have not had really the exact, exact thing that I need to do uh, to make my, 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 my nonprofit a bit more visible. Yes. And uh, first of all, I would request that uh, if you can share with, uh, with us the, the PowerPoint you've used, there is a section that I missed especially on uh, the types of content and the rest, I would really appreciate. Okay, uh, yes, uh, let me, have you seen my email? Send me an email yet. and I'll be able to forward. Maybe you can uh, post your email address on the chat because I missed it. I think it's there. If you go onto the chat, Dennis, you'll be I able to see it. I came in late, so I can't see the previous chats. Oh, you can't see, oh, 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 oh. Let me, let me, let me, okay, I've shared. Now I I, I see it now. Now, a, a question uh, for you, uh, maybe uh, two or three questions. About the Airbnb, um, what gadgets would you require to have in order to, to share that content? From you need so a nice, most NGOs have a camera. <laughs> the NGOs I have worked with, they do have, the NGO I used to work, most NGOs I have worked with, they have a camera. So, mm -hmm. And even we have smartphones, very nice smartphones nowadays. So you use a Zoom. They usually show you to use a Zoom. And um, you make sure you sign up as a nonprofit. Don't sign up as you. And it should be registered. And when mm -hmm. you, you sign up, they don't, you don't pay them the 20%. It's not deducted. You receive your whole money. So you just need a camera and probably a very nice microphone. Uh, just focus on your voice, not the background noises, okay? And then you share your experience, okay? You tell them um, nice things about your nonprofit, and then you share your school of thought, your ideology, your philosophy, why they need to participate. And you know, if you can even have 15 participants even per week 
and they are you are charging twenty dollars or even ten, that is one fifty dollars you have raised for your nonprofit that one week, and you never know what they might. You will end up giving them your website. They will see the donate now button. They will be able to view and decide if they want to donate. And when they come to Kenya, do they want to participate? Or if you are dealing with children, can they bring some toys they have had? If they are doctors, do they participate in your mission for, for medical services? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these people are abroad and they are planning to come to visit a particular country like Kenya. Okay, so they are looking for experiences as they look for experiences like, uh, like which is the nice leg to go, like Trukana, they are shown how it looks. They have interest in going to that area. They get a virtual tour. What if you're in Trukana and, and, and when they are looking for things in Trukana, you appear on Airbnb and you are offering those virtual tours for nonprofit on Bidu to support Trukana women or to support, um, do something nice to, to, to in the Trukana community. You get it. So they yeah. end up subscribing for your virtual tour and getting engaged. And you never know, they could even order a product on your on their website for the nonprofit thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, okay. yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, um, you opened my eyes on... Uh, that I had not even thought about. Mm -hmm. But I just want to pick your brain um, from the two wow. of you. It's easy for a nonprofit that works with tangible things. When you work with um, children, when you help women, you can mm -hmm. touch, you can see. Yes. The challenge that I have experienced is we do not work with anything tangible. And I tell you what we do at the Catholic Bible Foundation. Uh, we are part of the Catholic Church in South Africa. And our vision is to help people have a personal, a living, a dynamic relationship with scripture. So what, what, what are the tools of our trade as a nonprofit organization? The tools of our trade as an NPO is the word of God, which is scripture. And anybody can say, ah, I can read my Bible at home. But what we do is we are bringing an experience. We are making you have that connection and relationship to see the deeper riches that scripture can offer you, that the word of God can offer you to become a better person. Until you have come to our workshop, it becomes just an ordinary, ah, uh, why should I go to an NPO? Uh, or we'll talk about the Bible. I can buy a Bible. I can read it. I go to church. Just from what I have told you, what do you think are the things that we can do to make it tangible? You, you're, it's tangible already. You have... Yeah. Bible studies, you, you want to help people know how to read the scriptures and understand it. And, and not only that, uh -huh. how does going to the word of God, how does you reading the Bible make you a better person? What if I'm depressed? It will make me a better person when I overcome depression. Exactly. What if I feel like ends are not meeting? What if I feel so lonely and so down, like things are not working out? I always go down to my knees and pray and read the Bible. <laughs> because you are, you, you, are, you are right. But now, <laughs> if I go to an, an Airbnb, what do I show them? You now well, tell a... them. You, you do the Bible, Bible study thing. <laughs> what I'm getting is that uh, actually, as you do your Bible uh, sessions, you can have them go live on Airbnb so that people are seeing how you're doing it mm -hmm. and maybe how you're using the Bibles, you know, the ones that you have. Even I'm thinking uh, in terms of going to the community and having a Bible kind of distribution mm -hmm. and 
and showing that on Airbnb that uh, on this day, we had an event where we reached out to a community that has not had access to a Bible. So we mm -hmm. are sharing our Bibles with them and reading with them and uh, you know telling them about the word of the word of God. Mm. Yes, you yeah. know, let me tell you something. You see, on Airbnb experiences, there mm -hmm. is so much diversity that you would be like, oh my God, I will fit in. Let me tell you some of the weirdest thing there is. You see those. Mm -hmm bondages, dormantrix and submissiveness. There is, there is even a dungeon tour to those activities. Two, you see this thing and tell you the yeah. future? Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they offer a, Airbnb experience. So you can offer an Airbnb experience. Anybody mm -hmm. can offer. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. offer an Airbnb experience on marketing. I can offer an, an Airbnb experience on talking about giraffe, even mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. going to giraffe center and showing them about giraffe, they, they do. Yeah. Good. What if somebody Good. wants to know when I come to South Africa, where can I go for Bible studies and how is the experience first before I even go mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They'll come to you. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Thank you very much. Or, 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 I'm having interest to know how these uh, Catholic Bible Foundation, uh, you know, seminars work, for example. And are you using the Catholic Bible or are you using just the, the normal Bible that we know? You'll be able to log in once you have a, a, an Airbnb experience. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jen, I, I wanted to know when, when it comes to now doing that uh, content, uh, what I'm getting, it, 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 it has to be live, right? Should it be it live? Has to be. Live. It has to go on live. Yes, yeah. that is now live content. That is live content. It's like how we are doing it. This is live yeah. content. I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Now you will be distributing it through Airbnb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm looking at a situation like in our country, Kenya, uh, where if if I have a camera and go out there just uh, recording there are those kind of uh, regulatory and other kind of things how do people go about that like you, you, you see in, on the on the streets nowadays in nairobi uh youth go to, to the streets uh most of them around the weekend but uh they have uh, problems with uh, the city county government uh not allowing them to take uh photos live pictures and how do we how do people go about that that one i cannot advise because i never create content outside this room my bedroom <laughs> that one will be misleading you but the type of video thing i'm talking about on airbnb you are in this vicinity you are in this area mm -hmm. whereby you have a children's uh children with disability okay mm -hmm. you are teaching them knitting you are teaching them beadwork. You are teaching them garden, gardening. You're teaching them some things they can do. Some of them even are learning computer and they have autism. Uh, they have Down syndrome, okay? Some, uh, so what you do because you are within this environment, these people you keep sharing with them that type of content every day because they will be different. So somebody is from South Africa, the other one is in is in Brazil, the other one is in US, like three from US, five from, from Canada, others are from Europe, others are from Australia, New Zealand, others are from the Philippines. They all come, they will always be different. They are looking okay. for things they can do when they travel to that country. Mm -hmm. You get it. Yeah. Mm. So you you appear there, give them an experience of empowering a child with disability okay yeah. how do you empower a child with disability by giving them skills like knitting like computer literacy like even maybe you you, you even take helping them to a point that now they can get into the normal school system people will love this they gravitate towards this 
your school of thought. So they become part of it. So if every week, 15, 15, 15, so your work will be clicking the same button, playing the same, showing the same thing, the same routine, like the same uh -huh. way I would sit here, keep repeating this video again and again, but it has to be live. You don't, if you want to mess up yourself, they want to mm -hmm. hear you the way you hear me, don't record. Don't do them a recording. Be live, participate. Yeah, you see like the Catholic Bible, you see there are so many people who want to do, to learn yoga. So when I come to South Africa, how is the yoga experience in this particular, with this particular yogi? So they sign up for the yoga session and they follow the instruction and they see, oh, if I come to South Africa, I can have the service. So you keep repeating the same thing. It's like me doing the same thing every day. Now, what I change is my, this one and my mm. top. I, yeah. Mm. Yes. I guess. That, that, that's good. And I'm just thinking as you're speaking on this virtual experience on mm -hmm. Airbnb, mm -hmm. um, we, we have to play around maybe with the infographics. You know, the ones that I saw on the World Health Organization that you gave us as an, exa as an example. Because we have got strict, the the, we have got strict mm -hmm. laws. We are not allowed to show children's faces without the school or their parents' uh, authority. We can't. Exactly. We, the, the, you'll be in serious, serious, serious trouble. So, yeah. and, uh, uh, so I'm just thinking the best way for our situation would to use infographics and then talk uh, like a live presentation and say and ask for concern uh, and say we have been to this school this is what we did there were children using different pictures and images not of children because then we'll be in serious trouble okay so um you know you're the one who understand your area you you will know mm. how to customize everything Mm. for you to mm. not break the laws and to help mm. the person behind the camera enjoy it like the way mm. I'm, I'm i think i hope you're enjoying <laughs> oh i am i am i am yeah. Yeah. but you see i customized this experience for you for people mm. who are in non-profit mm. if i was to talk to people who are psychologists it would be something very different you, you get my point yes Indeed. the best thing because now you are aware of the things you can do it to customize it and now read mm. the terms and conditions for Airbnb or non-profit on what mm. you can and you can't do. What about Canva.com? So Canva.com is what I you use for infographic. It's a free tool and it accepts mm. it accepts non-profit. It gives them free. It allows them to use it for free. Uh, okay. What What does it What does it uh, uh, allow you? It's a, it's a, it's a it's a graphic design software. Yeah, I've used a Canva, but they would ask you to buy certain things. So how do you use it as a non-profit? You, you just go to there. You just book. Ah, OK. Ah, yeah. wow. <laughs> wow. You know what? Thank you so much. Uh, you know what? And, 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 and you know what? There was a lot of things that we have been paying for with very limited financial resources, mm -hmm. which which now I can go and 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 uh, and make those savings and direct them and channel them for other things. So thank exactly. you, thank you, thank you so much. Like the this Canva for nonprofit, the Airbnb, the uh, the the Google for nonprofit. I didn't even I didn't even know that that. It... Yeah, but if if with Google for nonprofit, if you are a faith based organization, they don't accept. If you are a school, they don't accept you. They want non-profits, a registered non-profit. We are a we are a faith-based organization, but we are a registered non-profit. Okay, fine. They won't have a problem with you. So what you do with Google for nonprofit? Uh, TechSoup has to verify you. Then you you just go and apply for for the for the funding. It it goes twenty four hours. You have it. But it will not be sent in your account. You will be able to do advertisements to people all over the world. You will ah, be able lovely. to appear ah. on Google. You will, when people search for Bible something, on you appear. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if people search for 
support children with disability in Kenya, you appear. All right, okay, thanks. That's and good, then good. how do you use, how do you use, because I have been struggling to see how we can use Instagram and uh, yeah, mainly Instagram and TikTok. Well, I'm, I'm in digital marketing <laughs> and I specialize in search engines and email marketing. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, okay. not social media <laughs> ah okay yeah. all right you see you see you see that's uh, yeah 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 i'm asking about uh, you know you you you're you are talking of some uh, you're giving examples uh, that are coming from the from the segment that i'm working in my organization works uh, with uh, children with special needs yeah so uh, the examples that you are, you are giving about uh, are really striking it uh striking enough for me and uh, uh brings up a very practical you know reality on me i'm located in nairobi utawala area i'm looking for a non-profit i can volunteer my skin I'm here. there is a non-profit that irritates me they sit here in the supermarket and when you are moving they're like can you donate they call you yeah. and i have told them I want to volunteer in your nonprofit and do for you digital marketing. I'm here. Now, because, we strike okay. a deal. You start, you start with the two of us, foundation in South Africa, and another the, one. The, then you have a footprint. <laughs> then you have a footprint. In <laughs> East Africa, you. hold on. In East Africa, you are volunteering. In Southern <laughs> Africa, you are volunteering. <laughs> no, no, hmm. me, I don't know anything to do with. You, we need you yes. in the Catholic Bible Foundation. <laughs> All the three of us are Catholic. Yeah. But anything to do with like, I don't know. I don't know how to contribute in the whole thing, but I know exactly what to do in an in, in an area of female genital mutilation, children with disability, and sanitary and, and menstrual health. I know yeah. so much because that's and refugees because my university report i did about refugees mm -hmm. uh in in it's called what in um working with non-profit i used to work with children with disability wow so you know saint patrick Vic, so we would go there to work with children in saint patrick Vicar. we would go to work with children in Vicar school for the blind the and on and... my yeah on my field tour we went to Leonard Chester Disability in Kisumu and SOS Children Home. Uh -huh. So I gained so much interest in children. You get welcome, so welcome, you, welcome. So welcome. you are welcome. Now you need to understand how, as Catholics, we can make a difference <laughs> in people's lives using scripture. Fine, I, I can. You know, it's good to be open up for a new opportunity, for a new thing but i want to be a volunteer and a recognized one not like this no, not like you volunteer without being part of that nonprofit. you are part of yeah. the role is there even if it's volunteering if they are putting their team on the website you are part of their team you're not left then out because i'm assigning you that immediately because actually one of the thing uh, why I, I came into this uh, uh, I've been uh, shopping around uh, to redo my website. It's one of the, the horrible ones, it's not the best. And also develop some content, a lot of it that we can uh, disseminate. But now how to do that content, how to disseminate it has been my challenge. Of course, uh, I've went around asking people and sometimes I'm given uh, a fee note, a quotation kind of, if you want these, we need this much, but I don't have that money. If, yeah. if is your web website on WordPress, fine. I will work on it. You don't have to pay me. I'll volunteer and do that. So long as I'm wow. organized. <laughs> wow, great. I really appreciate it. It was meant that we appear on this call, the three of us only. <laughs> Thank you. So I can be working yes. uh, one day for you, another day for them. Mm -hmm. I volunteer like eight days a month, a few hours, like five, and that's it. Th thank you, thank you, thank you so much. At least we, we are much further than you are, and, and mm -hmm. we really, really appreciate 
so in terms of digital marketing, what space are you looking at? What areas are you looking at in digital marketing? Google for nonprofit and even for my mm. customer, my clients, mm. I don't do everything for them. Mm. Mm -hmm. I do specific. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, actually, actually, um, we prefer to be shown how to fish. Exactly. Because if you show, if you show us, that's our philosophy. If you show us how to fish, you would have given us a lifeline. We don't like the fish. Yes. Yeah. So I will engage you further, and I am very sorry. I have to leave. I my number have, is. What is your number? Have you put it on the chat? And my email, I have. I will ask Elijah to um to send uh the recording to you. I'll send him the email. That is fine. Uh, three two six seven. Let me just repeat it. It's plus two five four seven two double six three two six seven zero. And your email J is uh, J. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we Lovely. we didn't get to see you. We didn't get to see you. I am <laughs> I am in pajamas. I I will see you next time. That's that's the beauty of working from home. I'm working from home. <laughs> Did a meeting. My hair was like this. When I switched uh, on the camera, my hair was like this. <laughs> so, uh, uh, because of the pandemic, I'm working from home. Uh, the beauty about it is I wake up, I, I, I bath, I shower, I don't have to change my pajamas. I am uh, uh, laid back. Uh, okay. Next time when we meet, uh, which will be very soon, uh, what your first name is Njambi, am I right? Yes. I oh, Jambi. <laughs> Jambi. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for correcting me, Jambi. So thank you very much. I have to leave. I wish we could continue. And I thank all those people who arranged for this presentation. I have left, learned a lot. And thank you for the offer to, to volunteer. I will take, uh, take it up as, as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I have to leave. And Dennis, would you like yes. to share your email address? Uh, you never know. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, let me drop it in here at Gmail. Uh, how do you pronounce your name? Your your second name? My surname is Mogi. Oh, it's Mogi uh, at gmail.com. All right, lovely. Yes. I will certainly be in touch. I'm sorry I have to to leave um, uh, without us finishing off. But thank you very much and God bless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in Jambi, what I'll do, uh, I think you are God sent. Uh, what, uh, what I'll do will uh, uh, catch, catch up from, from here so that we see uh, what you can start uh, working on. Uh, yeah, to support and, uh, before, before you even continue, I would prefer we start working from February because so I can finish some work I have on January. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we can start working on February. Because if I tell you I'll start working now, <laughs> I have three websites. So no pay Fe attention. Feb yeah. Feb so I finish what I'm doing and then mm -hmm. I come to you. Okay. Okay. Yes. And uh, I will I'll visit your place. You are, you are, you are, and yeah. Yeah. Then I'll be, uh, we can share much more of other things that, uh, that we do because we also coordinate a network. Mm -hmm. of uh, organizations working in the disability sector mm -hmm. uh, called Action for Children with uh, Disabilities. And all those guys that you are mentioning are our members. Selena Cheshire, uh, uh, Handicap International who are working in the refugees. All that, many, wow. many years, we are so Kenya, they are within our network. So uh, perhaps once we happen to meet uh, I, I can take you through the, the whole uh, landscape of what I'm, I'm currently yeah, doing. We are going to meet. We have to meet. Uh, we'll thank you more. so much, Dennis, for coming. Thank you so yeah. much. Nice time. We are continuing to chat, right? But we will start yes. on February. I can't wait to start working on you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Good day.